Now that we have the head removed, we're going to move on to the skinning process of the pheasant. Before we start, I want to quick touch on the importance of wearing latex gloves and an apron. Whenever you're working on any specimen, it's always important that you wear the proper safety material. You want to make sure you always have a barrier between you and the specimen. Uh, we're going to be removing the tail to start. I have a scalpel and a bottle of cold water. We're going to use the cold water to wet the feathers down around the tail so we can see where we need to cut. So to start, we're going to lift up the feathers to expose the tail area. We're going to spray these feathers with water so we can clearly see where we need to cut. We're going to cut right above or underneath the oil gland. We're going to expose the feather quills of the tail. We're not going to cut, we're only going to cut the distance of the tail feather quills. We'll take our scissors and cut through the tail bone. We don't want to cut through the feather quills of the tail, just through the tail bone itself. We'll now flip the bird over and basically repeat that process on the underside of the tail. We'll lift up the feathers. Wet down those feathers and cut right along the feather quills. Now pull the tail right off. Later in the video, we'll go over how to remove all of the meat and other tissue from the tail, but for now, we'll set it aside and move on to the belly incision. Moving on to the belly incision, we want to separate the feathers down the breastbone. To do that, we will wet down all the feathers on the breast area, and we'll slowly start to separate these feathers so we can have a clear line to make our belly incision. We want to start this right at the top of the breastbone and work all the way down to the vent. Now that we've made a clear path to make our incision, we'll go ahead and take our scalpel and make one clean cut right down that line. On a pheasant, you can primarily use your fingers to separate the meat from the skin. It's not like a duck where you have to use a scalpel to do everything. Uh, your fingers actually work really quick to do this. And I'm just removing, I'm just separating the skin from the meat. As you can see, we've completely separated the skin from all the breast meat on both sides and the front and right down to the vent. We'll now start on the legs. We'll grasp the leg with one hand and start inverting that. Now that it's been about inverted at this point, we'll take our scissors and cut right through the joint that connects the leg to the thigh. Again, we're going to continue to invert this leg. You want to make sure that you don't cut through the skin. Moving right down. You can also use your thumb to do this as well. And if you need to, you can put a little bit of borax on it just to give yourself a little bit more traction. You want to come all the way down to the joint. Now that we've pulled the skin all the way down to the joint, we'll take our scissors and cut right through all the tendons and meat. 
on both on all sides of the leg bone. Then we'll simply take our scissors and cut right up the leg bone, detaching the meat from the bone. all of the meat on the top of the bone here. Just get rid of all of it. At this point, we could either drill down through the top of the bone to remove the marrow, or we could cut this right off with our scissors. We're gonna cut it off in this case. We'll take a paper towel and a wire. This is a 12 gauge wire. We'll wrap this right around the leg and we will remove the marrow from the bone. It's important that you remove the marrow from the bone or as this could bleed grease down onto the feet. It could also attract bugs or an end it could start to smell after the mounting process. Just remove all that marrow. The rest of this will come out during the washing process. And we'll remove the rest of this meat during the fleshing process on the wheel. We'll just clean it up a little bit more. Now that we've removed the other leg, we're going to continue the skinning process. We're going to skin down and around the vent and the tail area. So to do that, we are going to balance the bird on its neck area and start to pull this skin back around the vent and tail. We want to carefully cut right along the skin. Again, pulling as we go. Start to skin down these thighs a little bit on each side. We're approaching the tail area. I'm going to skin right around the tailbone. You can see the hole where, where we remove the tail from. This is a very delicate part of the pheasant as you move on to the back. I'll be flipping this around in a second so you can see it a little bit better. Now that we've skinned this far on the bird, we're actually going to hang it to make it easier to skin down the back. We're just going to run our wire right through the backbone and just continue skinning right down. We can also use our fingers to uh, pull this meat right down, S separate the skin. Now we're starting to approach the wing joints. You want to cut right through the wing joint. You want to keep the 
humerus bone on the wing, but you want to cut right where that humerus bone connects to the carcass. You can see here's the humerus bone right here, and here's where it connects. We're just going to cut right in between those two to separate that. You want to be careful at this point, it's very easy to cut too deep and cut right through this skin that's on the other side. So you want to make little cuts and be aware of where you are at all times. We're going to grab right onto the wing itself and continue cutting just to separate that. Right, that wing has been removed. We'll now repeat the process on the other side. Now that both wounds have been removed, we're going to start skinning down the neck. You can see the crop. We can get, go ahead and just pull that right off and skin right down the neck. This is an easy spot to put holes in. At this point, we can pull this right off the neck. And I will set this carcass aside for future reference. Now that we have the bird skinned out, we want to go on to working on the wings, removing some of the excess meat from the skin, and turning the pheasant wattles. This is a fall pheasant, so it doesn't have as big of wattles as a spring pheasant does, but it still has some areas that will need to be turned so we can fill that later on with caulking. To turn a pheasant wattle, you need to find the line where the wattle starts and the skin starts, which is right here. Smooth to feather quilled area. The smooth area is the wattle, the feather quilled area is the feathers on the head. So we want to cut right along that line. And we're just separating and opening up the wattles. Very similar to turning the lips on a deer. Like I said, this is a fall bird, so they don't have to be opened up very much. And I'll flip this back around and invert this. And we've successfully split this wattle all the way down to the end. We'll repeat the process on the other side. Now we've successfully split that all the way down. We will start on the top wattle area, which is right up here, right here. That's also been turned all the way out to the end. We'll repeat the process on the other side. Now we'll move on to casing out the wings. We're going to use the case skidding method on these wings. There's a couple of other methods that you could also use, but today we're going to just do the case method. To start, we want to grab right onto the wing and start to separate the meat from the skin.
After you have it about this far, we will put a little bit of borax on that. You can actually start peeling the rest of the skin off the wing using our thumb. You can see the other part of the wing bone is starting to become exposed. I'm going to skin around this joint. At this point, we want to start separating the wing feather quills from the bone. So we're going to use our thumb to slowly start peeling that right down the wing bone. I'm going to continue to invert this wing. I'm going to come right down to this joint. This is as far as we're going to go. We're not going to worry about skidding out the ana at this point. As you can see, we've fully inverted the wing. We will now start removing all the meat from the wing bones. Okay, we're just going to use our scissors and cut all the meat off the bones. You can see we have most of the meat removed from the bones. The rest of this will be taken off during the period when we're on the fleshing wheel. We'll use our wire wheel and remove the rest of this meat. Now we're going to start casing out the other wing. We're going to skin right along the skin, separating the meat from the skin. It's very easy to put a hole right here. The skin, the meat has a tendency to overlap the skin, so you want to make sure you take your time. We're going to work on the other side a little bit.
continue working on the other side. At this point, we're going to put a little bit of borax on the skin just to help us peel the skin away. It's going to start peeling and pulling the skin off the wing. Work on the other side. I'm going to lay the bird down and start exposing the joint between the humerus and the radius bone. Flip it over and work on the other side. Exposing this joint. Now that we have the joint exposed on the front of the bone here, we want to start working on the back and separating the feather quills from the radius bone. To do that, we'll apply a little bit of borax and we'll take our thumb and just start peeling right along the feather quills to separate those from the bone. So you can see we're working our way down. We have the feather quills staying attached to the wing, skin, the skin on the wing, and the bone is right here. We're going to continue to peel the skin off of the wing. Now we're going to start to pull the wing bone out of the wing. You want to be careful when you're doing this that you don't tear the wing skin. We'll now lay the bird back down and start cutting the skin away from the meat. Use a little bit more borax, provide a little bit of traction as we slowly start to case the wing. Want to come right down to where the radius meets the ulna, right at that joint. That's where we're going to stop skinning. Now, as you can see, we've completely inverted the wing. We will now start removing the meat from the bone. Now we'll start removing the meat from the bones. We'll use our scissors and just cut the meat right off the bones. Now we'll work on removing the meat from the radius bone. Flip it around and work on the other side. Now, as you can see, we've removed most of the meat from the wing bones. We'll clean up the rest of this when we go onto the wire reel to remove the fat from the rest of the bird.